Okay, so it's not exactly where I wanted to be, but at least I can find some comfort fiddling with my golden rod. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Outside. The series, of course, we're going outside zombies maps such as Classified, which we have to do today. Of course, I have a mod menu on. It allows me to do things such as turn on God mode as well as no clip, and then we can get to, you know, looking at the map from a little bit of a different perspective. If you're excited for this as much as I am, leave a like on the video, it helps me out a ton, and of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So, as I said in Voyage of Despair, I did not play Black Ops 4 for much longer than a month after its launch, and I have not ever played Classified. This is a first for me. I've never been here. Obviously, I have played 5, its counterpart, numerous times, and of course we've gone outside five as well, so there's gonna be, I'm sure, many comparisons to draw, which I can already see it's definitely the case. And I really do think that's gonna be one of the coolest aspects for me, like being able to go into rooms like this that you could not do in five. I mean, this was an area outside the map that we explored, had a bunch of filing cabinets and all that fun stuff, and it seems like it's changed quite a bit since then. But before we get to all that fun that's going on over there, let's start with the simple stuff and start hopping out some windows. And I think the best place to start is right here. It is the same place that we started last time. Let's check out this location. So of course you can normally see most of this through the window right here, but you don't get to walk around in it. It's very dark and I will say the layout is pretty much identical to five. Zombies just spawn back here in this corner and then they come on over towards the window there. However, the modeling is very different. I mean, there wasn't a hole in the ground here, for instance, and there's a whole lot more debris here. Just off of a first glance, it really seems like Classified has undergone a whole lot more damage than 5 did in Black Ops 1. And just as it was with 5, there is an invisible barrier between these two areas here. So if we go on through to this side, which I think this is actually the side that we started with on 5. But nevertheless, let's check out it as well. It has this little hallway back here for zombies to spawn. Again, the same as 5. But this, well, this is, this is very different. So, one of the coolest things that we found in 5 was this hallway which we're in right now. And this hallway extends all the way down here around the corner where it's used as a window location. Well, I mean, at least part of it is used. Obviously, most of this hallway you never get to see. I speculated then, and I still do believe now, that this was planned to be a playable area and that a second way out of spawn from that hallway and through towards the elevator this way was going to be a thing at one point. And it seems to me, here in Classified, they were thinking about doing it for this map. Obviously in Black Ops 1 it never got finished, but here in Classified it looks the same as true. They started making window locations, as you can see this area right here, which did exist, there was a little hallway here in Black Ops 1. But here in Black Ops 4, it looks like they extended it a little bit. They made it a little bit larger. I mean, the floor is very, like, shiny. It's, it's like black tiles, which I don't think that's the case anywhere else in the map. Like, if I go back inside the map, yeah, very different in here. But this definitely looks like they were working on making this a window location, as well as allowing this to also be a window location. For zombies to be able to spawn here and go towards the traditional spawn area here in 5, or take a left and go out to this hallway. But alas, it seems it never ended up happening, sadly. So here in Black Ops 4, yeah, these areas are still completely unfinished. But there's one thing that looks the same, and that's these two doors. They're both still closed. In 5, behind one of them, there was what looked like an unfinished window location. So let's see. Yeah, it's, it's still here. Yeah, I know it's really dark, but hopefully with a little bit of After Effects for brightness and all that fun stuff, you can see this area. And yeah, there is definitely an unfinished window location here as well. It's really cool to see that this area has been at least worked on a little bit, even though most people will never be able to see this. But you guys are special. But we got way more to look at here in Spawn than just that hallway, so let's go ahead and continue onward through this window right here and take a look at this room, which does, again, look like it has pretty much the same layout. Zombies spawn right back here around the corner, but all the modeling is, I mean, it's its very different. I mean, generally, it's about the same. There was a printer, I think, in this location, 
there was some desks and all that, but it seems like things have been thrown about and there's a whole lot more blood going on here. And this window location does connect with the one next to it. There is no invisible barrier between the two, which is quite nice, but they are separate. I mean, zombies spawn in this corner for that window, and they do not cross to the other location, even though this, this blood trail would have you think differently. And as far as this room, it is actually quite a bit different. For one, I don't have collision with this desk, which was a thing in Black Ops 1. And two, there is no poster here of that Vietnam campaign mission. There usually was a big old board here that had that over it. So maybe we'll find that somewhere else in the map, but it seems to be missing here. It also looks like this NSA logo is like popped off the wall a solid couple inches. And as another big note, I'm, I'm seeing all these books on these bookshelves. In Black Ops 1, there was one really interesting one which said Edward Richthofen on it, and I believe most of you guys said that that was supposed to be his memoir. And of course, that the Pentagon was looking into him and, and, and studying what he was doing for Group 935. But here in Black Ops 4, it doesn't seem like those books exist. There were definitely was one on that shelf right there, and we'll keep an eye out for it in case we do find it anywhere else, but it seems to be at least missing here. Now, moving on to this side of the room, if we hop on into here, well, this is quite a bit different, isn't it? I mean, at least it looks way different to me. Maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I don't remember there being just a hallway here. I thought this connected to the room behind it. They, like, added an extra chunk of, of building. I almost want to go back into Black Ops 1 and check, but of course you're looking at it right now on your screen, so you know the answer. But we do have some filing cabinets, although it seems like some of the files that are in there are just popping out. Oh, and they do actually have the Damien Git Row thing still on them. I still have no idea, like, what that is. Damien Got Row? That's definitely what it says, something along those lines at least. There's a real good look at this one, though. I don't know if that says Damien, but that definitely says Got Row, I'll tell you that much. And as for the filing cabinets themselves, in Black Ops 1, it was top secret, mid secret, and low secret. However, here in Black Ops 4, it's top secret, confidential, and declassified. Which, I mean, probably makes more sense, but I really think the top, mid, and low secret was hilarious. Also, the boards here don't seem to connect My to the window. What a great Let's game this is. Off. And lastly, here in Spawn, we have two areas up to the left and right, which did not exist before. Yeah, in Black Ops 1 up here was just nothingness. There was a big old sheet of curtains, and you could not see past them, and there certainly was not a room here. But it does seem like that has changed here in Black Ops 4, which is quite nice, although it's, it's very dark. So actually, I'm going to go turn the lights on first to the facility. Let me go, let me go hit the power. Usually I wait until later on in the video to do this, but I think this will help us out quite a bit. I've been on my own personal quest for power for quite a while now. Yeah, this is much better. So if we hop up here now, we have a whole lot more light, and we can see that bulletin board from Black Ops 1 just chilling right here. The Hoang River in Vietnam. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that, to be completely honest with you, but it's very obvious that this was ripped right out of Black Ops 1. I don't think it even was upscaled. This looks the same. Just because we can, here's a side-by-side -side of the two of them. You know, it's quite strange what's going on here with the floor. It seems like there's, like, these pieces of ground clipping through. I'm not sure why that is. Yeah, very strange. So here's a little look at it. So if we come down here, we can see... I think what's going on actually is these little areas above us right here that are modeled with some like wires and pipes and stuff. Because of that, the ceiling is lifted in these portions and I think that is what is clipping through the ground here. I mean, even some of these like wires are clipping through the ground, which surely you could see from like across the way. Yeah, there's one right there. Interesting. And as far as the other side, let's take a look at it. it pretty much seems to be identical. They also have the same bulletin board right there and uh, some filing cabinets and all that fun stuff, but nothing too terribly interesting. Well, I suppose other than this, there's an extra little area right here with a big old barrier in it. Don't seem like I can do anything. So we got a couple pieces of something here. 
Yeah, this definitely was not in Black Ops 1, so kind of cool to see. Little addition, I suppose, to add some ambiance to this window location. Oh, and, and surely before we leave spawn, we got to find out how high are the barriers here. So it seems like the barrier on these desks actually extend all the way to the roof here. I can't, I can't get on top of them. Yeah, so I can do this, but I don't think, like, I'm not in the barrier. I'm like, there's something, something strange that was happening right there. So it seems like they took the barrier that in five was honestly about as high as my reticle right now and extended it all the way up into the ceiling. So that old glitch where you put two boards on the window, hopped on top of them and jumped onto the desks, that is definitely not possible in Black Ops 4. So that is about it for spawn. And I think the best place to go next is actually out this way into, what do they call this? Central filing, I suppose that makes sense. There are a lot of filing cabinets. Now, of course, this was not originally part of five. This was just an out of bounds location. This is where those top mid and low secret filing cabinets were scattered all about. And of course, the modeling of this room, it seems to be quite a bit different. They definitely opened it up a little bit at the very least. I mean, there was definitely more filing cabinets in Black Ops 1. But at first glance, the layout of the room seems to be about the same. We still have this room back here, which is now a window location. And it did exist in Black Ops 1, even though, like, you could barely see any of it. It's gonna be really interesting to see that. But before we do, let's just hop through this window right here. It seems a little bit more simple. A little area back here for zombies to spawn, it seems, like, around the corner. And come on out. But that is about it, I suppose. It's a bathroom, but a bathroom that doesn't exactly have much... Toilet tree, huh? And we also have this window location, which seems to be separate from that one. So if we hop on into it, it, well, it's also a bathroom. Apparently this is the woman's bathroom right in here. Again, equally as empty, but a little place for zombies to spawn. And yeah, there's not much going on in here, huh? Although there's my boy Lincoln. This canvas has definitely seen better days though. All right, it's time. Let's check out the big one right here. Hop on into it. We do have a whiteboard, which is cool. We got a little uh, little orbital dynamics going on. Nice. I'm sure you guys are super interested in that. That's what you came here for, physics, right? But as for the rest of the room, I mean, we have some filing cabinets here, which are very different than the other ones. Kind of strange. And we do have a blueprint here. Oh, for the Nova 6 crawler? Really? They made a blueprint for the crawler, and it, inv wait, it involved pigs? That seems to be that a pig and some DNA stuff happened to make this. So it's like human human pig hybrid. Is that what's going on here? Gross. Oh, here's a much better version of it here on the ground with a whole lot more lighting. So uh, there's a look at that for you. But we got more to check out here. It looks like there's a little bit of a hallway here going around the corner. This section right here that I'm in right now did not exist in Black Ops 1. However, this doorway did. And if I remember correctly, I think it connected to this big room, although not like, it kind of like superficially. Like they, these two areas were separate, but not separate. It was a strange time. But it seems like now here in Black Ops 4, they completed this connection and they did fully make and model this little hallway, which I suppose makes sense considering this right here, well, it's playable space now. And this would probably be a fantastic camping location if that window didn't exist. Oh, there's a part right here. Wow, Rick Toffin seems really excited about that one. And I suppose that leads us to the main offices here, which immediately looking at this, it's way different. This room is so much smaller than the one in Black Ops 1. They definitely added a whole wall here, just separating it. And I don't really get why. I mean, as you can see out that window, there definitely is more space. Normally in Black Ops 1, this wall was not there, and this whole room was open all the way to that entrance, which I think was the river entrance. In the campaign mission USDD, you walked through these doors right here, and along this left side of the room, all the way down and around that corner right there. It honestly seems really silly to me. Like, if you're gonna add this room, why not make it the whole room? I mean, this space existed, and you're modeling it anyway because you can see it from inside the map, so why isn't it just playable area? As for this area, uh, some of these offices do still exist, like this one right here. And there is a couple things in here, like there's a chair, there's even a desk. Although there's not 
too much modeling going on. This definitely seems like it could have been a window location. There's a little area back here that a zombie could have spawned in and came out the window right here. But again, for some reason, there's a wall here. There is a hole in the wall though, look at that, the glory hole. But before we leave this magnificent area that will still not be playable area here in Black Ops 4, we can check out this little entrance area that, well, oh my god, it became way darker when I went in here. That is really strange. When you walk out of it, brightness. And then when you walk into it, darkness. Ooh, what does this say? Ring D subfloor. But if we go ahead and use a little bit of no clip, is there anything outside here? It looks like no. It's just a little cube that for some reason changes the brightness of your game. Kind of strange. But hopping back on into the map here, we do have a lot more to check out in this room. For one, there is this room, which strange, it's closed off. In USDD, I believe this was the Germany room and inside of it, there was like a wooden model of the Berlin Wall, but it seems like here in Black Ops 4, well, there's nothing at all. Fond as I am of dingy, lifeless environments, I would fare better with a little bit of electricity. That voice line could not have been timed more perfectly. But it does seem to connect here actually to this window location, which has a skeleton on a desk. Weird. Yeah, the modeling in this one is a bit strange, although I will say still pretty cool. There's certainly a lot more blood in Black Ops 4 and a lot more random objects scattered around like this briefcase, for instance. But yeah, it seems like zombies probably just spawn right here around the corner and then come on out at ya. But this door right here looking a lot like a window location makes me wonder whether they were planning for this to also be playable space and then just ended up cutting it off anyway. And one more thing to check out for this room is this little window here behind the teleporter. So if we use a little bit of no clip, make sure we go around the teleporter so we don't end up going through it. We can take a look at what's going on back here, which seems to be a whole lot of chairs. And I mean a whole lot of chairs. There's, I mean, there's, there's got to be like 20 of them in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, there's 17 chairs. And it looks like there's some extra paintings as well in here as some like really old looking desks. We got a beautiful picture here of the Flying Fortress, although it seems like there is no insignia here below it. Same for this picture here too. And at the back, there is what looks like another window as well, but it goes to nowhere. Oh wait, no, no, there is a little room here, isn't there? It even has a light. That's strange. So wait, what is beyond here? Nothing, okay. But the ceiling continues. Yeah, take a look at that. It definitely seems like the developers were planning on extending this hallway, considering they definitely extended the ceiling, but I guess they never got to it, or perhaps it got scrapped, I'm not entirely sure, and instead they put a teleporter location right here in front of the window. And last but not least, we have this window right over here, which I suppose we did hop into a second ago, but here's a better look at it now. We do have this whiteboard, which seemingly is replacing the Derise whiteboard, which was there before. Wait, I'm saying whiteboard. It's definitely a blackboard, but kind of cool to see that. Again, orbital dynamics. I love it. We also have, of course, some desks here scattered about with these old TV monitors on it. Pretty much the same as they were in 5. Although, I mean, location-wise, they're, they're definitely... Uh, clearly, they've been moved about a bit, and the chairs are all scattered about, and oh my god. God, the amount of blood. There's this little area back here around the corner for zombies to spawn and come on out towards the windows at ya. Oh yeah, and another hole in the ground. I don't know if there's any kind of significance to these. Maybe for the Easter egg, there's something you have to do. You guys are gonna have to let me know down in the comment section. I know nothing about the Easter egg and I really hope I don't end up passing up anything because of that. But anyways, of course, we have the main attraction of this room, the Ascension Rocket just sitting right here on the desk. And right here, the blueprint, which was the Ascension rocket in Black Ops 1, for some reason here in Black Ops 4, it's the Nova Crawler blueprint. So that is pretty much it for that area. So let's go ahead, hop on out of this window, and we have this hallway here to cover next. And it feels nice being back inside the good old area of 5. I am definitely not used to that yet. We do have a couple window locations to check out, so let's hop into this one first. 
which seems pretty cool. I mean, the projector is still here from 5, although uh, it's not exactly projecting the same image. And as far as modeling goes, I mean, we got a bunch of desks and stuff scattered about, and at the back here, of course, we got a little hallway for zombies to spawn, which seems about the same. Although, it doesn't lead anywhere. There was actually a hidden room right here in Black Ops 1, and it seems like that is not present here in Black Ops 4. I remember specifically that it connected back behind where a Speed Cola machine was, almost like the reason that they got rid of it was the Speed Cola machine itself. Although, hey, this map is still here in all of its glory, although it's been covered up by a lot of blood and guck here, it seems like. And lastly, before going down the elevator, we got this window location right here. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. In Black Ops 1, right here around the corner, was a staircase, and it seems like in Black Ops 4, that most certainly isn't the case. And, I mean, as far as modeling goes, it doesn't seem like there's anything too crazy going on. This clock does say 1230. I don't know if that is of importance to, like, the Easter egg on this map or anything like that. But I do, I do gotta see. If we go past this wall, does the staircase still exist? Oh, God, where am I? I'm in, like, a cube. Okay, so this is very dark, but there's this area right here that I just was in, and if I go below this, the staircase does still exist, this invisible staircase, even though they very visibly changed this area. And there's also even, like, a little area below it now, which I don't think existed in Black Ops 1, although it may have, but it might have just been invisible at that time. But yeah, the invisible staircase exists, and the actual staircase also still does exist, going down to this window location here in the war room. Which, again, I really do think that in Black Ops 1, they were thinking about using that as a way to get down, instead of this elevator situation, in case the elevators didn't work out. But thankfully they did, because, to be honest, the elevators on this map is probably one of the coolest features of it. Now it's time to go down the elevator, but before we do, I'm gonna take a sip of the coffee, because of... Of course, I have my coffee with me here this morning. I hope wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself, because I am a ton. Five was always a really cool map to me, and although it's not like my favorite map of all time or anything, and it was quite difficult to play, I've always had a ton of fun playing it. It's one of those that I've found myself going back to quite a bit, actually recently even. And right now, being able to actually check out Classified, I mean... I kind of I kind of wish I got this DLC when the game came out. I think I might have enjoyed Black Ops 4 a little bit more if I did. Because this map is so far really sick. And I think it'd be a lot of fun to play. Perhaps I'll have to actually play it sometime. So if you're enjoying this as much as I am, leave a like on the video down below there. And of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. But without further ado, let's continue. Which, our next stop, it's the elevator itself. Go ahead and hop on into it. Of course, it doesn't seem to be too different. It's still a wooden elevator after all, and if we hop out of it, we can see that the elevator shaft does still exist. It goes up to a level up there that, yeah, it doesn't really need to exist, but it does. Kind of cool that it does, I suppose. And it goes down to the floor here, of course, to the war room, which all of this does have collision, which is nice. I will say the elevator shaft itself looks very, very different. And also, it looks like there's two places for an elevator to be. There's this one right here, and there's also this one. Oh my god, look at that. So this right here is the elevator shaft that we were just in. As you can see, as I said, there is two areas that seem to have been able to have elevators in them, and right here is the second elevator. I don't know why, but it seems like they, at the very least, did have a second elevator here. I'm not sure if this was going to be an actual thing, or if this is here for some other, like, functional reason to, like, make the elevator, the normal one, work. Yeah, I got no clue. So let me know down in the comment section what you guys think, because I'm really stumped on this one. It definitely does look like this elevator shaft could hold two elevators now, though but there's definitely no evidence of any extra rooms or anything like that being constructed to extend the scope of what classified could have been. Oh, and yeah, out there in the distance? Look at that. Wait, what? Okay, so there's a random cube here too. That's not super interesting. I don't know why it's here. But anyway, what I was gonna show you guys was this, 
which is the teleporter boxes. As you can see, there's four of them, one for each player, of course, that so you can play with four people, you know, zombies. You guys know how it works. Anyway, this is where you're teleported to first before moving to another location. You're inside this black box and you see that purple or whatever color animation it is for Black Ops 4. I don't I don't know. I haven't used the teleporter yet in this map. But yeah, you see that animation play and then you're teleported to a different location in the map. So kind of cool to see that they're just floating way out here above all of this. And one more really cool detail, if I just go ahead and clean off the end of this round real quick. There we go, round six. And then if I go ahead and no clip on out, all the way over to these teleporter boxes here. There. Oh, it's gone though, you can't see it anymore. Oh, come back. There's another one. Okay, so it seems to keep going away and there's not a really good way for me to get it to stay static. But what we just saw there was zombies spawning in, or at least that's what I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on with them. It might be the place that they're teleported to between going to different areas, Although that doesn't really make too much sense for a zombie, so I don't, I don't think that's what's going on. I'm pretty sure what we're looking at is actually what's called the Master Spawner. Every zombies map apparently has this thing called a Master Spawner, and that is the location, essentially, that spawns all zombies around the map. First, the game puts them at that Master Spawner location, and then decides where to place them around the map, depending on where the player is. And for classified here, it seems that that Master Spawner is actually right here, next to the teleporter boxes outside the map. And now it's time for the war room. So of course there is a ton to check out here, but let's start with the upper level. We have a bunch of these windows scattered about and let's hop in into this one, which looks like it is some sort of break room. And I believe it was as well in Black Ops 1, although the modeling here, just as with every other room, it looks like some real funky shit went down. And again, we have another one of these craters here, which is strange. I don't know why. Is that like a bomb that went off or something? Oh, and the sinks still seem to be modeled horribly. The countertop actually does cover them just like in Black Ops 1. But continuing onward from that, if we go ahead and go across the way to over here, I, I believe we got a little office room to check out, so let's hop on into it. We got whoever's desk this was, which I suppose is, what, the head of the CIA, maybe? Would kind of make sense, considering there's a floating CIA, uh, what do you call it, uh, seal, I suppose? The seal of the, the CIA, is that is that what it is? And as far as modeling goes, there's nothing too crazy going on. The clock does still say 1230 here as well which is good to see there's at least a little bit of a coherence between that. And right here, we got a whole bunch of blueprints. Wait, is this for Ted? Oh my God, it's Ted. Oh, and it looks like we have some instructions here. So request for skin to cover the robotic exterior. Test trials have employees recoiling in fright at appearance needs to be more approachable and friendly. Quite interesting way to describe the good old Ted. Who programmed it with emotions and why? This needs to be removed before line operations. I, I completely agree. The amount of times he's kicked me off the bus, it's annoying. Early tests reveal prototype behaving inappropriately with employees. I wonder, I wonder what that means. Behaviors include using explicit language with employees, threatening employees, kicking employees off the bus, locking bus doors and refusing entry, skipping stops, unwanted opinions and sarcasm. Bus to be provided by Colorado facility. Crazy. So I guess Ted was made here at the Pentagon by the CIA, maybe? It is in his room after all. I gotta say, this is super sick. I didn't know this was a thing, to be honest with you. Now, I'm sure this has been found before, but it's very clear that there's no way to see this from inside the map here on Black Ops 4. But perhaps it's somewhere else around the map. We'll keep an eye open for it. But uh, yeah, pretty awesome, man. It, it's very clear this is Ted, and there's some really cool instructions here along with it. Also next to it, there's this, which says start date Q1 1964 with a projected completion date, well, just of 1964. And I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, actually. It might be the teleporter. And in fact, actually looking at this right here, it definitely looks like it. At the bottom, it says readjust something 
terminals needed them from take before DOD approval? I'm trying, guys. Yeah, that right there is awesome. Probably one of the coolest things that we found here so far as far as like differences with Black Ops 1. I mean, this most certainly wasn't there in Black Ops 1 considering, I mean, transit hasn't even happened yet at that point. Pretty awesome, man. And we even have this map here chilling as well, which I think was in Black Ops 1. But moving on from that, we got another window location down the hall right here past this chalkboard, which actually, this is not the same. In Black Ops 1, this chalkboard was filled with SR-71 light tests, and it had a bunch of names on it. But here in Black Ops 4, it seems like it just says, the world will burn and they will be to blame. Salvation only comes once Agartha burns. Just written over and over and over again. But anyway, yeah, the window location, that's what we were getting to. Let's hop on into it. It looks like there's a little area here for zombies to spawn around the corner. And as far as modeling goes, this looks pretty much identical. Obviously, there's a few changes. There's more stuff on the floor and all that fun. But I believe this was the tape room in Black Ops 1, and it definitely seems to be the tape room here as well in Black Ops 4. Now, that is it for this upper deck area. So let's go ahead and make our way down to the lower level of the war room. We got a window right here. Let's hop on into it. It doesn't look super interesting. Again, just a little place for zombies to spawn here around the corner, though it's a bit longer than I would have expected. And there also is what looks like a doorway here at the end, but obviously this doesn't lead anywhere. But anyway, continuing on out of that, we got another window right next to it, right here. If we hop on into it, we can see it's very similar. Just a little place for zombies to spawn around the corner, although obviously this one does not continue nearly as far, and I suppose, well, I suppose this window location right here is the reason. And as we saw right next to it was, wait, wait a second. This is playable area too? In Black Ops 1, this was a window location. In fact, it was a massive window location. There was a huge server room there that seemingly was a lot bigger than it really needed to be. I did speculate that perhaps it was planned to be some kind of location to play in, but it didn't really make a ton of sense at the time, but it seems like here in Black Ops 4, it definitely became one, didn't it? Oh, and here's the blueprint that we saw outside the map. This is the actual location I'm sure many of you guys have read it from. And we also have this window right here, which looks like a little maintenance area, a whole bunch of pipes. Nothing too crazy going on inside of it though, so let's go ahead and move on from that. So moving on to this side of the war room, we have this window location to check out, which is where all these like tape players are, and this looks identical to what it did in Black Ops 1. There even was this black wall window, or doorway rather, here in Black Ops 1, and it's here as well in Black Ops 4. I don't think there's any hidden details in here though, as far as I can tell. All the papers and, and stuff on these desks are pretty much the same as all the other ones around the map. There is this as well, uh, just as we saw before, and it's covered with dust, so... It feels like they were, like, trying to hide it from us, but then decided, eh, nah, let's just put it right up here on the wall so everyone can read it. Really strange how they did that. Oh, I just noticed here this picture on the wall is 100% an overhead view of Shangri-La. Surely that's the temple right there, right? Wait, so that probably means that this is the temple in Shangri-La, right? That's the staircase right here. Because isn't that where you get the thrill device from? Again, I am most certainly not a zombie storyline guy, so let me know down in the comment section below where that came from and uh, if, if that is what this is trying to say. We even have a picture right here of Shino Numa as well on this monitor just across the room. I think that's pretty awesome. And on this little one right here, looks like that's Verrucked. Oh, and there's Kino right there. It's a really weird look at it, actually. That's like the alleyway, right? Where the 74U wall by would be like right about there. Oh, you can even see Double Tap. Look at that. And it looks like this TV right here just constantly flips through different images related to Moon, at least as far as I can tell, they're related to Moon. Well, Moon and Samantha's bedroom, that right there with the characters as, well, I guess like figurines, I suppose you would say. That is definitely of Samantha's bedroom, but these ones right here that we're looking at right now, that seems to be of Moon. And of course, there's even one right here at the end, which is very clearly the MPD. I mean, I mean, look at that. And one more thing here in the war room I wanna check out is this right here. I checked it out in Black Ops 1 as well, 
And it was kind of cool to see how it was constructed. And it looks like here in Black Ops 4, well, it's a little bit different. Here in Black Ops 4, it looks like we have like four or maybe even five different textures overlaid on top of each other. One is this blue grid texture that just covers the entire thing. And if I go up high enough, we can see it just disappears. And next is this beveled texture that we're looking at right here, which gives it a little bit of depth and outlines the continents. And then sparkled about, which I don't think was the case in Black Ops 1, is all of these red dots. It looks kind of crazy, actually. Oh, and something else that's kind of cool to point out, before the power is turned on, of course, this teleporter here is covered up by a bunch of panels. And it seems that those panels go right here underneath the map. And they're just stored down here uh, after you turn on the power. All right, I think that's it as far as the lower level of this war room goes. There is, of course, the elevator to check out, and we will, of course, very soon. But before we do, it's time to see what's going on with this whole server room situation. So if we just go ahead and no clip on in there, although I know there's a door, but we're not gonna buy that. But it looks like in here we got a whole bunch of tapes and all that fun stuff. I mean, I'm looking around as if this is an area outside the map, but obviously it's not. It's just so strange to me being in here. In Black Ops 1, there was way more of these servers. In fact, the entire room was just a massive maze of them. It seems like here in Black Ops 4, they got rid of a bunch of them because, I mean, it would not be a very easy place to train zombies through otherwise. And there's even a DEFCON switch in here. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. And I noticed this right here, just stuck between, it looks like this is some sort of key to the ciphers probably around this map, which is kind of cool to see. We do also have quite a few window locations, although this one right here, as well as this one, we've checked out before because they, they link to different areas. But we have these window locations at the back, so starting with this one, let's hop on into it. Seems like there's not much going on here, just a little location around the corner for zombies to spawn. I mean, it's very cramped in here, but there is a whole lot of, like, toolboxes, though. And passing on by the teleporter, we got this room over here as well, which seems to just be like a maintenance closet. Of course, uh, we got some wet floor signs, and in the back, a vacuum cleaner. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for the war room, so let's go ahead and continue onward into the basement. Which I suppose before we do, let's go ahead and hop right on into this window location, which... It looks like it does connect around the corner behind the elevator, just like it did in Black Ops 1. And hopping into this little area, it looks very much so the same. Just a little location on either side for zombies to spawn, although this has definitely changed since Black Ops 1. But the layout, as far as like this being a plus sign, is still the same. And there's even some of the same modeling going on back here, like the chair and the desk up against this door, which the door, of course, just leads to nowhere. Nevertheless, this is a, a pretty cool little location, but let's go ahead and hop back on into this window, and I want to see, yeah, we, we definitely still have the staircase. So in Black Ops 1, this went all the way down into the basement, and it looks like it does here as well, although it's definitely changed a bit down here at the bottom of the staircase. It does still have this hallway, which leads to this window location, which is right here in front of the elevator in the basement. However, it doesn't seem to connect back here, which back here is the window location behind the elevator in the basement, which it, you only get to see open up when the elevator comes down. Which, yeah, this little area seems to be mostly unchanged. There's just a little area back there for zombies to spawn. And as far as this, I mean, the debris even looks almost identical. Oh, wait, wait a second. There's another elevator here. So it looks like, just like with the other elevator, the first one that we checked out, where there's this extra elevator chilling outside the map right here, it seems that is also the case for this one. There is an extra elevator chilling right here at the bottom of the elevator shaft. So I'm guessing that means that this elevator wasn't going to actually be used, and instead, it's here outside the map just for functionality, perhaps of the elevators themselves, although I'm not entirely sure. But considering both elevator shafts do have an extra elevator, I'm guessing that's the purpose of them. But other than a look at the inside of the elevator shaft, that is it for this, so let's go ahead and continue into the basement. Of course, there is a ton to check out down here, so let's just go ahead and get started and hop right on into this window which is like a little shower room. And it does look like this little 
surgery model is still being used for uh, the guy right here around the corner that hit his head against the floor. The modeling in here seems to be pretty much the same as Black Ops 1. It still has these weird locker looking things, but there's nothing too crazy to say about them at least. Although what is pretty hilarious, although I don't think I can show you guys on YouTube, this guy definitely has a butt crack. And I think the best way to tackle this is going to be clockwise, so let's just go to the left here, hop on into this little weapon testing room. Normally the Winter's Howl would be right here on the desk, but it doesn't seem like that's the case here in Black Ops 4. Although, yeah, the Pentagon Thief's glasses definitely are just chilling right there, huh? And it seems like the Thunder Gun is also missing from the shelf, so there's definitely been some changes here. Yeah, there's not even the big old pile of ice here down by the targets. Usually that's the case, but it seems like that's not the situation here. Although there's another uh, cipher key here, kind of cool. There's also a window location in here, so let's just go ahead and hop on into it. Gun rack, uh, just like there was in Black Ops 1, although it's missing all the guns that there were in Black Ops 1. I guess that makes sense though, considering they were Black Ops 1 gun models, and here in Black Ops 4, those gun models just don't exist. But yeah, just a little area here around the corner for zombies to spawn, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and hop on out of it, and uh, I really want to go see that ray gun. I mean, there's no Winter's Howl on the desk, there's no Thunder Gun here in the cabinet, so does that mean that there's no ray gun over here inside this window? Yep. Wow, okay, so they took all the Wonder Weapon locations out for some reason. They did, however, keep the teleporter, which is kind of cool, and it even says, attention, original Max's prototype, handle with care. For M, who started me on this journey. Whoever M is, I suppose Max is, huh? And it looks like on this desk, instead of the ray gun, we have parts of the teleporter, like this part right here, which I think is like the little, the little zappy bit, right? But other than that, inside of this room, we got a little location here around the corner for zombies to spawn, and we also have these guys, the canisters, of course, from Kino, with these really creepy zombie models in them. And here on Black Ops 4, it looks like there's actually two faces inside. I will say the one on the bottom looks a lot like the one that was used in Black Ops 3, while the one on the top looks a lot more like the original. Of course, a bit more updated, though. And lastly, just because I thought this was kind of cool and you would never get to see this probably otherwise, inside of these little cabinets, there are indeed lab coats and shoes down here at the bottom, even though I bet no one has ever noticed that. Just kind of cool to see the effort at which a lot of these devs have gone in to make these beautiful looking maps. But continuing on down the hallway, of course we got more to check out down there, but real quick, let's just see what's going on with this pig here in this doorway. Doesn't seem like there's much going on back here, although it actually extends pretty far over here to the left, even though it doesn't have to. Here we got, I guess, this little location to check out too, although it's very dark and there's not exactly much going on inside of it, just some like barrels and stuff. That's about it. So let's go ahead and continue on down here to this window location, which has a baby pig, poor guy. Around the corner though, it's just a little location for zombies to spawn and come on out the window right here at ya. And we even have some of these cages that I think were supposed to have the denizens inside of them in transit, right? There was a bunch of these in that pack-a-punch area of transit and that's always at least been my assumption. And in fact, this downstairs area, at least these window locations, that one as well as this one right here, look a whole lot like that pack-a-punch area on transit. It definitely seems that the two areas have a huge overlap of assets. And as far as this window location, well, we do have lab coats in each one of these, just to point that out again. But we also have these two little hallways right here and here as well for zombies to spawn, which I think, I think this is the one that they probably use, considering they have this little blood trail going on. That would be my guess. Now we did pass up the morgue here, so let's just go ahead and hop on into it. I don't think there's anything inside here though. Well, there is some writing here on the wall, which I've never seen before. It says, the ether is not for us. Ultimus will prevail. Teddy lies, dies, in fact. Okay, okay, Teddy dies. Who's Teddy? There are worse things to trust than a doctor. The voices in his head are just words on a page he read. It also says 199, like it's almost like a Bible verse. I wonder, wonder what that is. We also have this symbolage again that we saw on the chalkboard. And then at the back, we have the MPD from Moon that says the source. 
And uh, I don't know, is that supposed to be Samantha? And over here in this corner, again, there's more writing. They can only watch you if you gift them your soul. The world will burn and they will be to blame. Salvation comes only once Agartha burns. Some pretty sadistic shit, if you ask me. And yeah, also we have these guys. This is the surgery model that we saw, of course, in that shower room. It's the same exact model as far as I'm concerned, and it seems like it's just used in each one of these capsules as well. But continuing onward from this room, we got this one to check out. The one, one with the pigs in it. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. We got uh, we got this guy just chilling and, and very miserable, huh? Are you all right, bud? How you doing? All right, so continuing on from that, we do have a few things in this room to check out. Of course, there's two window locations. So let's just go ahead and start with this one right here at the back. It does still have the hanging pigs in it, just like it did in Black Ops 1, although I think there's less of them here. And we have a little offshoot over here, which I think is where the zombies spawn and come on out at the window over there. But there's also this hallway over here as well, which seems unmodeled and unused. Oh, and it looks like those words I just read that were on that wall over there in the other room are also written right here on this whiteboard. It's really strange how they seem to like reuse the same words, just plastered in a different place like this. All right, let's hop into it. Our last window location of the episode, we got the infamous hole in the ground, which was there in Black Ops 1. I think this was the only one that existed. Unlike all those other ones that we saw throughout the map, this one was the only one in Black Ops 1, and it looks like now here in Black Ops 4, there's a whole bunch of body bags here scattered about. I guess they really played into the idea that this was a hole in the ground that they were burying zombies in. Oh, and we even still have this here up on the wall, the uh, backwards chemistry thing, which I suppose now we can get a good look at it. It says we have listed both Todden and Saren. Be wary of the doctor. His involvement should be minimized. Yeah, definitely minimized. I feel like I'm learning to read for the first time again. If you want to make it out alive, we are aware on how he arrived at this time and place. Do what you must. So I'm not 100% sure what doctor they're talking about, whether it's the Pentagon thief who was clearly a scientist or the obvious doctor of Edward Richthofen. Not entirely sure, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. It seems like that is the heading of whatever this thing is, which says Industry Global Communication Service. Okay. And of course, there are two compounds here, which I'm not a chemist, I'm a physicist. I don't know exactly what these are. So let me know down in the comment section if you guys do, if any of you guys uh, have ever done some organic chemistry, because I'm, I'm guessing that's what's going on here. Yeah, strange. There's a lot going on there. I'm not sure if this is like a key to the keys of the cipher or something like that, or if this has no purpose at all, because this was there in Black Ops 1 after all. So again, let me know down in the comment section if you guys have any additional info on this. I would love to learn about it. And lastly for this room, there is this door right here, which is covered by this caution tape. However, if we go ahead and no clip into it, we can see that there is actually a little hidden room here for seemingly no purpose. I'm guessing they might have been thinking about using this as a window location and obviously ended up never doing so. And if we go outside the map, actually, you can see inside there is some modeling going on. Yeah, I don't know why they added this, but they definitely did. It's time. That is all for the basement. So let's go ahead and initiate our DEF CON sequence. Attention, we are now at DEF CON 5. Security lockdown lifted. The announcer seems to be a lot different in Black Ops 4 than Black Ops 1, huh? But all right, let's go ahead, hop through the teleporter, and bring us to the inner sanctum. Woo! So, of course, there are the typical window locations to check... Wait, where's the Pack-a-Punch? So, there's no Pack-a-Punch back here, huh? In Classified. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, again, I've never played this map, so I really don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that here in just a second, but before I do, I suppose, let's just check out the window locations we do have to check out in here, which first we have this one right here, which has good old George Washington up on the wall, just a little place for zombies here to spawn around the corner with some coffee machines, it seems, and a whole bunch of books, but that's about it. And as for the one across the way, if we go ahead and hop on into it, 
it looks a little bit different than I think it did in Black Ops 1. I don't think this extra hallway that's back here existed, but it seems like they added that here in Black Ops 4, I guess, to spawn the zombies a little bit further out of sight. And it looks like right here, this what was not a window location in 5 was just a door here in front of, well, in front of this door, right? The entrance to the inter sanctum. Well, now it is a window location. In Black Ops 1, this hallway existed and Dempsey's photo here on the wall also did. It was just a little hidden location out of sight, out of bounds that you never got to see unless you modded the game and no clipped outside the map. But it looks like here in Black Ops 4, they actually did make it a window location for zombies here to spawn at the back and then come on out the window at you, making this area just that much harder to camp in. But yeah, I don't know where the Pack-a-Punch is, so let me just go ahead and search that up real quick. Okay, so from what I just read, we need three parts in order to be able to teleport to the Pack-a-Punch, which there should be one in here somewhere. I think I got it earlier, but I restarted the game since then, so I gotta find it again. There it is. And then now we can go ahead and hop on over here and yeah, craft a teleporter signal amplifier? Sick. I guess that's what this blueprint is for, huh? And now I gotta attach this somewhere here in the war room. Oh, here we go. I'm sure I've thought of everything, honestly. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, okay. All right, so I'm guessing I have to activate the DEF CON again. So let me go ahead and do that. And then I'm assuming that teleporter there in the middle will now become usable and bring us to the Pack-a-Punch. Yes, there's the symbol I've been looking for. Let's go ahead and hop on into here. And here's Groom Lake. Oh my god. Oh, I can't even see Dempsey's house. Here's the Pack-a-Punch. Nice. So it looks like zombies just spawn right on outside there and hop on over at us. We're not actually safe here, which I'm going to be honest, that is not what I expected. Oh, and we actually have to teleport back. Wait, does this bring us? Come on, teleporter, open up. Where does this bring us? Surely not to Moon, right? No, okay, yeah, that would have been too cool, I guess. But of course, as we know, since Groom Lake exists here in Classified, it has to be somewhere outside the map. And if I had a guess, it would be where that random object just glitched into existence. And if we get closer to it, yep, here's Groom Lake. Okay, so here is where the Pack-a-Punch is, and it does look like I can use it, even though I'm not teleported here. Well. If, if I had the money to, I suppose. Funding. It's always about funding. And uh, it looks like it's pretty much the same as it is, certainly in Black Ops 3 Moon, other than all of this debris here in the center, which is horrible, man. Why did they do that? I guess they really wanted to make it hard to pack a punch. They wanted it to be a spectacle, right? Where you teleported somewhere, you pack a punch, and then you almost die trying to get out of it. But since we can, let's go ahead and use a little bit of no clip and just check out this area. Can we walk up here? We, we can. The forklift still exists from Moon, which is cool to see. And it looks like, oh, I fell through the map. But yeah, it looks like most of these buildings are the same, actually, at least for the Black Ops 3 version of Moon. We even still have this building over here that you can partially walk on, as well as these two barracks hidden here around the corner. And although most of it is the same, there is quite a bit different here, and the main difference actually is just this roadway. I don't think it looked like this in Black Ops 3 Moon or Black Ops 1 Moon for that matter. But it is kind of cool, and we still have the good old hangars here at the back, which, I mean, just because we can, let's just make sure. There's nothing hidden in any of them, right? Surely there's no UFOs in here, right? Yeah, so it looks like there's nothing going on in any of these Hangar 20s, However, I did notice that this hangar seems to have been renamed. I believe in Moon that this was also a Hangar 20 like the other ones, although I could be wrong. And if we go inside of this one, well, there's definitely something in here. You can't walk around, there is no collision, but as we can see, it's kind of made up of two parts. First, there's this outer layer, right? That is just the walls, I suppose, of the hangar itself. And then there's this inside dome shape area, which encapsulates a single 
lamp just hanging here from the ceiling. Yeah, this is really strange. There's absolutely no reason for this to be here. It's literally just an Easter egg for us to find, I suppose. I guess just placed here by some dev who really wanted to hide something in the Area 51 hangars. Oh yeah, and something else that should probably be noted about this, if we look back towards this direction, we can see all the zombies there in the distance still inside of the facility of Five. And of course, if we go back to it, it'll all pop into existence and turning around, all of Area 51 will despawn, except for like the cloud texture, which actually that cloud texture creates a really weird look here underneath the map. When you fall down here, it almost looks like little capsules floating in the sky, which is kind of strange. The only reason I point that out is because one of you guys actually made a video on this. It turns out that this is actually what you're looking at down here. This is simply just these clouds from Area 51. But yeah, there's not too much to say other than that. It's pretty cool to see that pretty much all these models are still out here and all in the same location, relatively at least, as they were in Moon. But I think it's time to check out the hangar. So let's just go ahead and hop on up into here. And let's see what's going on down in these little rooms on each side. In Black Ops 1, there is a desk in here, and it looks like that is still the case. We got a desk, and we got a chair, and it seems like this one is clipped into the wall just like it was on Moon. And if we go ahead and run around the side here, behind the teleporter and on to the other side, we can see that there is also an identical desk and chair combo. I'm guessing these two models are somehow paired together, and when you move one of them, it also moves the other one. So that's probably why, well, that ended up happening. Well, I suppose we'll look at the teleporter as well. And underneath it, of course, there is this massive area with a whole bunch of these like transformers all the way up and down the walls. It's actually really impressive to be inside of here because, I mean, looking down at it, you can't see to the bottom or anything like that. There's a bunch of fog blocking your view, but it's really awesome to see how much work went into creating just details like this that a lot of people probably just pass right on by. And lastly, just cause we can, here is a walk on top of the hangar. Behind it, of course, well, there's a huge void of nothing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is classified. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a ton of fun checking out Classified, and it's really cool to see just how similar it actually is to Five, even though they did make quite a few changes. And if you did, leave a like on the video, it helps me out a ton, and of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. I can't wait to check out some more Zombies maps as well as campaign missions. If you wanna watch more of my content, then click one of the videos on your screen right now, but if not, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay awesome, and peace out. That's Samantha, right? That's definitely Samantha that keeps popping up. That is so creepy.